Hey guys, welcome back to the Porn's Raster. Today I have a couple of interesting discussions I want to have about the Colonial Pipeline. I know you guys see all over, all over the news. There was a lot of articles about how they got hacked and how they re FBI retrieved all this money. So stay with me on this one. <clears throat> Alright guys, so this is the the core of the... So the, the top level of the story was Colonial Pipeline that supplies the fuel chain for the a good portion of the eastern coastline of the United States was hacked. Well, it was compromised, right? And they requested Bitcoin as a payment for these ransomware. So I'm going to go and dive deep into this article that I, I have that I usually read off of Hacker News. So let's, let's go on to that and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So here we have Hacker News and it says Hacker Breach Colonial Pipeline using compromised VPN accounts. So there's a couple of things here I'm going to start pointing out that no one else is ever going to mention in these news outlets. It could be Bloomberg, CNBC, anything. No one's going to mention this because they all know that if you do that, there'll be even a higher risk of these individuals being getting in more trouble. All right. So let's see. Um, I'm going to read off. You know, I'm going to break it down into the sections of each paragraph because it just makes total sense that way. So. So let's go off the first paragraph. Uh, all right, ransomware cartel that masterminded the Colonial Pipeline attack early last month crippled the pipeline's operating network using a compromised virtual, uh, of a compromised VPN. Let me explain that. Let me explain what that actually means. That means that someone, now they didn't say hacked, so don't think of a guy sitting there trying to go through you know, tens of thousands of accounts that people work at the Colonial Pipeline. It could have been as simple as an executive or a secretary either lost their phone or had some, their password written on a notepad, stuck on a laptop, and got lost. All right? You don't have to report a single hardware being lost. No one actually reported anything saying that anything was lost so this is not what they're saying they're saying oh it's a compromised vpn password i wonder how they got that well geez um it could have been many ways it could have been your secretary it could have been a bookkeeper it could have been anyone just going and writing down these passwords or even having it on their phone now the other thing is that they also mentioned was that these VPN logins that they have usually all synced up with their domain accounts to access the emails the, and, and every other document that they have access to. Now, it really comes down to roles, right? If if you work in an organization, what roles you have, you have what access to what files. That's usually the case. So we don't know the details of Colonial Pipeline, how their infrastructure works as far as their you know Active Directory, if they're using Windows, I'm assuming they are. Um, novel days are gone pretty much or what other other what other file systems they may be using and how they delegate those roles okay so let, let's keep on going um, so their VPN logins do not have multi-factor protection on it oof, oof, that's a bad one that's a bad especially in this day and age uh, so they had basically a very simple password I don't know what their password requirements were but just to have a single password and then it doesn't even matter how complex it would have been if the compromise came from someone writing down this password or having it in a notepad or a text document on their phone or their laptop or even and I could tell you right now by working and I've worked with many executives before in the past the the way they operate is they don't care about technology and they choose not to care about technologies for the most part they only use it as a tool to get what they need and that that what they need is to make more money i have seen senior executives not wanting to remember how to type in their current password because it's too complex right with special characters capitals numbers and the length of it because you know we went from having six character minimums to eight character minimums to 12 character minimums which is crazy right how do you how did one person even remember that when sometimes i could forget my own phone number uh when i'm trying to think you know fast so it's it's very hard for these guys to constantly you know remember it so they write it down or even have it on a, uh, a plain text on the desktop and for the most part uh you know desktop laptops or especially anything you travel with usually they try to encrypt the drive you know so anyone that does not have the password you know even if they took the the drive out and tried to retrieve any information on it unless you have that key 
it's going to be very difficult now again we do not know how this vpn password was compromised it could have been a lot simpler than that okay so let's keep on going so there was so one they got compromised vpn two they didn't have a multi-factor on this vpn account or any of the accounts because that's pretty much what they're saying right here it's unclear how the password was obtained obviously because even if it was said even if they did know how it was obtained they most likely will not actually announce that why because it really depends on the person uh, and in their position they don't want to blast this person or they don't want to degrade the level of security that people have in regards to colonial pipeline uh, you know a lot of companies do that because they just say that you know they try to remedi uh, as long as the situation was remediated they somehow and now just have to you have to remember this they, they are not going to come back to this article ever again um, they're not going to come back and release a, a follow-up article and say oh so remember that account that we said that was compromised through VPN well this is how they got it some people may dig a little deeper to find that but I can guarantee you after today all that is going to be put in the past all right all they all they know is that somehow they either are not going to announce that um, most likely they would not because what the company would normally do at this point is fix it right if if they knew how the password was compromised and if the laptop was not encrypted or they were writing they're going to send out more policies they're going to send out more reminders but usually in any corporation they have these little trainings every once in a while every year or so to remind you that you have to change your password you make sure you don't write it down these protocols and procedures and the policies put in place by the security team to make sure that you don't put these things randomly now i guarantee you by tomorrow they're going to have VPN, uh, two-factor multi-VPN uh, to log into these accounts. And everyone's going to start complaining that they have to carry around this, this you know, Google Authenticator or whatever it is to, in order to log in. So, of course, that's going to be the case. Um, so, Darkseid, this uh, cyber criminal syndicate behind the attack, was disbanded, but they did make off with $90 million, which is crazy. From the 4.4 million that they request requested the gang estimated to have walked away with 90 million during the nine months of operation nine months they made 90 million and this was only a small portion the 4.4 million ransom that they actually requested is only a small portion of that 90 million so these guys have been making a good amount of money not saying that is a good line of work to get into but i mean they they are <laughs> very effective in what they do now i don't know how they got the 90 million number i'm not sure how they even know that dark side made this much is it because everyone was reporting it and if they were i haven't seen the other request of you know uh, ransomware request of requesting how much money they were trying to get from all these different organizations so i'm not aware of any of that but what i do want to point out is uh, with Colonia Pipeline, they stole about 100 gigabytes worth of data. Now, that's a lot of data, okay? Now, you have to take into consideration an Excel document and a Word document. There are only a couple Ks. Um, even if you got into their accounting system, their financial accounting uh, files, maybe at most a couple hundred megs per file. 100 gigs is, we're talking about years of information. I don't know what other information they have maybe it's floor plans or, or you know uh, images of whatever it is that they maybe they have proprietary software and you know they they just accumulate it throughout the course of time but 100 gigs worth of data is a lot of data to be transferring over the wire now if that was the case and also the case that they were transferring 100 gigabytes of colonial data over the wire that means they've been doing it for a long time right now it wasn't overnight because if, I guarantee you if anyone was monitoring the VPN activity on the network, they would have seen 100 gigabytes of data transferring from, one, from this one account and the organization. 100 gigs. I can guarantee you if I download anything, even 5 or 10 megs on my account, they're going to ask me about it. So obviously... Colonial Pipeline has nothing in place to monitor any of this. And 
this did not happen overnight to get a hundred gigs of data overnight is a red flag uh, that would just show up in any report if anyone was to monitor this weekly or you know bi-weekly would have seen a hundred gigs coming from this one person now granted maybe this one person does work with a lot of files that they count that they compromised okay the account that they compromised possibly could have been working with a lot of files and they just have you know things that make sense right because oh it is vpn or they didn't just have the manpower to monitor everyone because colonial pipeline is a big company so i wonder how many people are actually on the vpn at one given time but even then you would set you know triggers in place to see what's being downloaded or not but the fact that they already don't have a two-factor for the vpn and not being able to monitor a hundred gigabytes of data transferring from one individual VPN account from the organ uh, from the organization to this account, uh, it's already has a lot to say about this company as far as securities and where they stand. Right. So now I'm sure they're gonna they they will remediate all that. So of course this FBI group that retrieved all this is a new group. It's called the CISA. Please don't confuse that with the CISA exam from uh, Inaka, uh, I Isaka. Isaka is a company that, that does exams and it's also called CISA, Certified Information System Auditor. But in this instance, they are called the um, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, which is another CISA, totally different from, from the exam, okay? Uh, within 12 hours, an additional mandating facility to submit a vulnerable assessment identifying the gaps in their existing practices within 30 days. So. These guys are going to go in there, they're going to assess everything, how the data was lost, how the data was compromised, how the account information was compromised. They're going to put that onto a big ass report about like five, six hundred pages and, and someone is just going to have that document and let it sit on the desk because honestly, no one reads it from front to end. It's just the assessment that they did from beginning when they walked in the door to when they're ending and it's a big report. Um, basically, they take that report at, at that time and they say, okay, we, we did what we needed to do, which was, you know, follow the, the rules of the agency, right? Which in this case is the CISA, the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency. Once they have that, and then if, if it was to ever happen again, they, re, they kind of reference back to that and say, oh, we we've experienced that before we, now we know what to fix all right so so this report is going to have remediate remediation steps um you know obviously there's going to tell them to make sure you change your password ever so often uh you know you make sure you now you have the two-factor in place and uh, make sure the roles are delegated appropriately where not one individual has access to the entire organization uh, even server admins, domain admins, or you know, people who manage the file system, the custodians of it, should not have access to all these files. Even you know, with one given account, most organizations will create multiple accounts: one where you use as an average user, and one for your specific job roles. And it's constantly being audited. Okay, so that's that's very crucial. So let's keep on going. So the ransomware demand um, inflated thousands, millions of dollars. So to have have the attacks on high profile victims with companies in energy education healthcare and food sector increasingly become prime targets of course because you know there's a lot of government funding there's a lot of money there and it's somehow they you know it's better to go big than than do small jobs right so um but one thing and of course this goes into somewhat not all the details of it you know they so the group Darkside and, and other groups would be similar in ransomware attacks where they either try to, you know, promote that they've got information that you don't want the public or your investors or the media to know about and you pay this ransom. And but because this is actually on the news and it's been on the news on the Colonial Pipeline affected our gas prices because Colonial Pipeline, like I said, goes through the entire eastern coast for the most part. You can see this chart right here. Uh, it's it's a vital line. It's like it looked like blood and veins, right? Because it is practically, and it's unfortunately that it's all controlled through just one company, and that one company does not seem to be really secure. The fact that they don't have two factor for the VPN, an account was compromised, and a hundred gigs of, of worth of data—that is a lot. 
All right, so someone is obviously not paying attention to their infrastructure as far as the networking infrastructure. Um, so how does this all relate to crypto, right? Because now what they're saying is FBI was able to retrieve the Bitcoins that were paid to Darkseid. Um, and they had access to the wallet. How? I have no idea. Um, that's, that's really... I'm going to try and dig deeper into that as well because having access to the wallet is some, something really unique. Now, the other thing is also, how does this relate to everything else that's crypto? Um, Chia, for instance, you know, we, we've seen on Reddit where people said that they lost 10x Chia's or XCH Chia's, you know, 10 of them or more or less or whatever the case is. Uh, you know, you can choose to report that, but most cases, most times I think the FBI or the police is probably not even going to look at that because unless it's like for kidnapping, ransomware, or there's a death threat, then they'll start looking into it where someone is requesting XCHs or, you know, crypto coins from you. But if you were just, you know, someone hacked because you launched a script and you lost XC, no, no one's going to do anything for you, honestly. No one's going to even look at you. Uh, in regards to that you just have to suck it up and be like tough luck all right so that's pretty much what i wanted to uh, speak about today this is you know this is going to be a hot topic for some time because it's just it's interesting to learn that even as of today in 2021 after all our history you know with target and all, and all these other organizations that had been compromised colonial pipeline still kind of sits in the back end of things where maybe they thought that they weren't that big or you know, they didn't have that kind of money to, you know, protect or they, they weren't a prime target. But unfortunately, they are. Everyone's a target nowadays. But, you know, this hopefully they this would boost up their whole security measures and, and things around it because it's it's all about that right now. Now, so that's what that was pretty much it. What I wanted to talk about. I know this is a little different from my normal Chia, but it does relate because it's crypto in general. Now the FBI has access to your wallets. I'm just saying. I don't know. I want to thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it always. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Always. See you again soon. Bye.